goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your presence, oh God. We pray that the word that is shared today will find a place in the hearts of those that are listening, oh God. And I just commend today's word to you, oh God. Be glorified through it and by it. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. I'd like to continue my series on slavery and masters. And uh, the last few weeks I've been talking about the master has a master. And we've been learning that God has a God, that the king has a king, and that the Lord has a Lord. So God is a God of gods. He's a king of kings. He's a Lord of lords. But today I feel inspired to go in a little bit more into the, some of the things that Jesus was trying to get the people of his day to understand and to relate with. One way God has of, of, of helping us because of we being the slaves, not understanding the type of master he is, is God has given us history. And when you study the history of man from Adam to the day, you can get an idea what God is trying to do in us. Because we're living in today history, not yesterday history. Our history is that we are making today will be history tomorrow. So present, the present is history for tomorrow. Yesterday is history that's in the books. So I want to look at uh, Jesus in a, uh, a parable or an example that he gave his disciples to try to give them a revelation. In the book of Luke, Luke chapter 19, and, and I'm, I'm going to start with verses 27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the story in the parable. I want to go directly to the ending. So Jesus says, but those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, I would be their master. I would be their Lord. I would be their king. Remember? He's king of kings. He's Lord of lords. And he says, bring them here and slay them before me. And so we have this story of slaves. Verse 13, see, this is about slaves. The word servant in our Bible is the original word is slaves. So look in verse 13. And he called his ten slaves and delivered them, and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. We will not let him lord over us. See, this is a story about slaves and a master. And no matter how you try to get around it, you can't change what it is about. And so what happens is Jesus was talking to an audience that had more knowledge of a king and a master. I'm talking to an audience that does not have that understanding because we live in a democracy. And so when we read stories like this, we are looking at it from a democracy. And so we, we, we read the story, we glance over it, and we keep on going. It's a beautiful story, but it has no impact on us. Of, let me say none. It has very little impact on us because we, we elect our officials. And because we live in a democracy, it's hard to understand the gospel of the kingdom. And so when we read Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John, those gospels were written because it says, repent for the kingdom of God was at hand. It didn't say repent because the democracy of God was at hand. And so no matter how I try to teach people about slavery and the master, I'm talking to people who cannot identify with slavery nor a master. So the gospel 
has very little power to them other than salvation, healings, and deliverance. So when they look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're looking at it as God saves, God heals, God delivers, but they never see the king. <laughs> they don't see their role with that person. They only see how to use the king. So when you're preaching the gospel of the kingdom in America, it's a different gospel. Americans want to know, how can I use the king? How can I get his welfare? How can I get his food stamps? How can, how can I get free education? How can I get everything free? Because in Matthew, when he wrote it, the king says, take no thought for what you should eat. Take no thought for where you should live, the type of home, and the clothes on your back. So what do the king of the kingdom says? For your heavenly father know all the things his citizens need. So we hear the Gospels, we read the Gospels, but we cannot accept the king in the Gospel as a master, only as a provider. So when our children get sick, we pray to him. When there's a need of deliverance, we call on him. Why? Because the Paul said in Romans 10, verse 13, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, saved, healed. So we love that part of the, the scriptures. But when it comes to the part of being a master and a slave, we have some serious reservations on that part of the gospel. And so the Bible is full of God is the master, making his slaves to work his field, Genesis 1. The master says, let us make another master like ourselves in our image and our likeness. So in Genesis 1, the gods make gods. <laughs> and then in Genesis 2, the gods make slaves. There was no one to work the fields for the gods. So they didn't hire a slave. They made a slave. And what did they make them from? The dirt. And so that he would never forget who he was. He was never the master. He was always dirt. And so he assumed that the man that's in the image and likeness of God is him. So the Bible separate a man from a man. In the word of God, it says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? So we have this man that God is mindful of him. And the very next part says, and the son of man. Why? Because the son of man is not man. He's a God that was born from a woman and became both man and God. So listen to it again. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And then it's going to change. And the son of man that for a little while you made him, not them. See, he didn't make them. He only made him a little lower than the angels. So this him that is not them, but came out of them, but is not them, for a little while you made him less than the angels. Yet we see promotion. We see him crown over all the works of your hand, all the cattle, all of the sheep, all of the birds of the air, the psalmist wrote, all of the fish of the sea, and everything that passed through the paths of the sea. Oh God, our Lord, how marvelous and how excellent, how exciting are uh, what? Your ways that you will become like one of us to teach the slaves how to serve the master. So people don't understand this concept. And because it's a master and a slave, it's completely removed from people that are raised in other systems where they're not trained to respect and reverence the master. And so my messages are very difficult to understand and receive because of democracy. 
We have an election coming up this year. And the people choose their king. It's a democracy. Not a theocracy, not this, not that, not, not, you know, all of the different types of governments it is. So God permitted in, in history to have different types of government that would show us who and what he is not and who and what he is. So back to this particular one here. In here, these slaves, they were also citizens. <laughs> See, they were slaves, just citizens of the kingdom. And they, guess what it said in verse 14? They what? They hated him. Now, notice that in the verse prior to that, he gave them provisions. <laughs> they hated their provider. They hated him. And guess what? why they hated him? They didn't hate him for the money he gave them. They hated him because they said he should not reign over us. So, continue, verse 15. And it came to pass. In other words, time went by. He didn't say anything. He let time go by. Lots of time. Thousands of years. <laughs> Why, he's not in a hurry. He wants everyone to have an opportunity to decide whether or not we want him to reign, not his provisions. Notice there's no problem with the provisions in here. We have no problem when God heals, delivers, give us good jobs, give us marriages, give us children. We have no problem with God other than the fact of rulership and a master and slave mentality. Continue, please. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom. Ah, that's why he hasn't returned. And so there's verses in the New Testament that Jesus talk about. And people, they think that the kingdom is today. No, the selection is the day. You decide today whether or not you want him to be your king tomorrow. Because the day he's only your healer. <laughs> Let me say that again. What is he today? The day he's your healer. The day he saves you from your sin. The day he's your deliverer. But he's not your king until he receives a kingdom. So we, we was to pray this way. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. He's not here today as a king. He's a king up in heaven. But that takes faith to believe because we can't see what's going on in heaven. Is he really ruling in heaven? Well, we don't know. One thing we do know, he don't rule on earth. Another thing we, don't, we know, he don't rule us. <laughs> see, if you don't know anything else, you know he ain't ruling you. That's why God don't select who you married. Because then you're going to blame him for the bad marriage that you made bad. See, God can never make a marriage good. Never. Why? Because all people are bad. <laughs> so God only decided to marry himself. Let me say that again. God only have one marriage. Jesus is only going to marry one bride. He's never going to have a bunch of women and marry them all, all the one the same day. He's on, and that group of people is known as the bride of Christ, not the brides with an S. <laughs> it's not the brides of Christ. It's the bride, one woman, one body of believers that function as one serving their husband. Bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Continue, please. That when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these slaves to to be called unto him, to whom he had so given the money. So notice what he does. He's calling slaves. So everybody that had died or be living, the day he come back, the grave, those that are dead. So this is how powerful the king is. The Bible says there's a day coming that all that's in this grave, grave will hear his voice. 
And they, that's John chapter 5, if you're taking notes. That's John chapter 5, verse 25 and 27. So, so the day is coming when he will call all of his slaves, dead ones and living ones, to stand before him. What a master, that even the slaves that are dead, he will lift them out of the grave to give an account on how they live as slaves in his world. Continue. Then he commanded these slaves to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, Thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here's thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. So he knew what kind of master he had. He said, This master want me to work the fields. Let me say that again. See, he's, he's saying, I'm not going to give this master anything, even though I'm living in his world. See, the, the field, the Bible says, the Lord said, tells the parable of the sower. And then he tells us what the field was in the parable. He says, the field is the world. So God has put all his slaves in his world on his field. That means every individual on the earth, if you're on this earth that belong to the master, you one of his. It doesn't matter what color you are. It don't matter what nation you live in. The master owns the field. And there's only one person that owns the world, and that's the one that created the world. So there's a day coming when the master is coming back to the world. Whether you live in or dead, he's going to call you. And he's going to ask you, what profit did I create you for? A lot of people think that they're created for their own self-profit. So they live for themselves. They don't even thank him for being born. They're so arrogant, they deny even his existence. And they drink his water and breathe his air and then blaspheme his name. So this guy said, I knew who you was. I, I knew who you was. I knew what kind of master you was. And I ain't like the things about you. So I wasn't going to do anything that would bring you glory. Continue. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst sow. And he said to him, Out of thy own mouth will now I... Now watch how the master does. He's not going to judge you by what people said about you. He's going to judge you by what come out your mouth or how you see him. You see him hard, God will be hard. To the forward, God will be forward. People say to me sometimes, Prophet Holly, why do you talk to certain people a certain way? Because they talk to me that way. And they think because I'm a pastor, I forgot how to talk to people that talk like them. They think God is going to judge me because I talk like them. No. God is going to reward me because he made me to speak the language of God in their language. <laughs> so, see, some people only understand their language. And when you don't speak their language, you can't reach them. So to a Jew, I speak Jewish. To a Greek, I speak Greek. To a fool, I'll speak to the food as a food. And I will fool the food. Because <laughs> the food didn't know that there was a better food than him. See, I'm a fool for Christ. He's a fool for the devil. We both fools. But I think I'm a better fool than him. And I don't believe I fooled anybody when I say that. <laughs> Continue. 
because I become a comedian instantly. Continue. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee. So God judges us. The master is good. The master is going to let you judge yourself. When you stand before the master, you ain't going to be able to control yourself. Notice that he still didn't fear the master. See, you have to see this. The master calls him and he's standing in front of the master with no fear. With no fear. He said, I know who you was, and I'm going to tell you to your face. I said, I, I've, been waiting to, I've been waiting to tell you to your face. So continue. Thou wicked servant. So what do he call him? The word servant is what, y'all? Slave. So what kind of slave was he? See, you still a slave. You a dumb slave, smart slave, a good slave, a wicked slave. But the word slave, because you in the earth, you on the earth, you can't get that off of you because you human. All humankind are slaves. And that's what the problem with Christianity today there are Christians that want to believe, I'm not a slave. You may be a slave. No, not me. I'm chosen from God. Continue. Thou knewest that I was an austere man. See, God didn't disagree with him. God know what kind of master he is. God know that he will slap the taste bubs out your mouth. God knows that he put the first slave in the field and told him, I, I, don't touch that tree. What would happen if I eat a fruit off your tree, master? The day you touch it, I kill you. See what kind of master he was? The first story of the master and the slave requires death if you disobey him. It ain't had nothing to do with adultery, lying, stealing, killing, or anything. It had to do with eating a fruit. So he wanted to establish this point from the first man and woman. I, disobedience to me is equivalent to rebellion to who I am. And I put down rebellion by killing everyone that's disobedient. So the Bible says, by the disobedience of one, many became sinners. The next part says, by the obedience of the next slave, many became righteous. So how do we become right and how do we become wrong by obedience or disobedience? Well, what does sin got to do with law? God don't blame slaves for sinning. They're animals. They have the nature to grab, to want, to kill, to steal. So God said all are sinners. Once I bring you from the dirt, worms are moving in you. Sin is present in every member because I didn't make you from a spirit. I made you from dirt. So in you, sin dwells. But I'm your master. So God never gave any of the slaves in the beginning laws. <laughs> Everything was legal. Men took women as they want, and the men saw women and they took them. <laughs> that wasn't called sin. What was sin to God? It, disobedience. And people saying, why do you preach that? You can cause people to fail. Not when they're obedient. See, a man that obedience, how can he sin? How can you sin when you're obedient? Because God don't mark it as sin. See, Abraham believed God. That's what made him right. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go and do good works. So was it, was it a sin for him to tell his wife, go sleep with another man? Not in the eyes of God. All that God required Abraham to do was obey his voice. And God said, leave your father and mother. He obeyed it. God said, that's right. You're a good guy. And people can't, they can't, they can't get a hold of that. Continue, Keturah. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? The Lord said, you know, you, you, you would have made it 
if you had just took my money and put it in the bank and just got the interest off that, them, them robbers, the banks, uh, because these other guys ain't put, none of them put their money in the bank. Everybody know you don't put your money in the bank. <laughs> even, even Jesus knew that all the way back there when he wrote, the, gave this parable. He's saying, this is the worst investment you ever can make in life is putting your money in the bank. So he, but he, guess what he told the guy? If you did that, that would have saved you. That would have been enough to save you. Continue. And he said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound and give it to him that hath 10 pounds. So he takes it away from one slave. And watch God. He don't give it to the poor slave in the group. He gives it to the richest one. Look at the master, how smart he is. He got a, remember, they start off with, there were how many slaves? Ten slaves. He calls them in, and one of the slaves served the master and got him more profit than any of the other slaves. So when he takes it from the one that gave him the less profit, he gives it to the slave that gives him the most. And people wonder why some people have more than others. Because you don't slave as much as I do. <laughs> Why do God bless you, prophet, as much as he bless you? Because I'm a good slave. I give him good profits. Regularly. I don't believe in robbing my master. So he put me under white masters in America. He says, let me see how this Negro will serve a man that's not his color and will cheat him with his wages, abuse him, curse him. Why? I don't want anybody in my kingdom. I want people that I can test. And this Negro one day figure out, you know, this could be God, this whole slavery thing. You know, this slavery thing could be a test for me. And uh, how can I prove to God, who I, I cannot see, that I'll be a good slave if he permits me to work for him? I got this. I know what I'm doing. I'm be Uncle Tom. The real Uncle Tom, not, 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 not the one that they blaspheme. I'm going to love my master. I'm going to serve my master. For every job I had, I worked for a white person. I had jobs when they didn't promote me. But I did it as unto the Lord. And I had places where they didn't promote me. I mean, didn't promote me. I worked, the last company that I retired from, I worked there 22 years and never got a promotion. Why don't you quit? Why don't you go and get that money you can make and be rich? Because the master told me, said, I want you to stay there so I can give you a testimony. I want you to work there, and I want people to see that you will be able to take care of your six kids, send all six through college, and have no debt. I want them to see that you're going to be a pastor of a church and a father over six married with that salary that's not going to change for 22 years. I need you to do that and serve that man faithfully. Because if you can do that for 22 years, I think you can do that for eternity with me. And so Christians, they want reparations. They don't see the test that the master has them under. They can't see his hands because it's invisible. They can't hear his voice. They did not look at the examples in the word of God because they are part of a democracy. They did not look at people who serve kings. They did not look at kingdoms. Well, how dare we do that? That's not the God of the New Testament, they say. 
That's Jehovah in the Old Testament. Continue to read, because I feel people pain already while I'm talking. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I oh, so, 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 so notice what the other slaves say. No, no, let's back up that. What do the slaves call him when they say this? Lord. In other words, they say, Master, you're, you're not fair. That's not going to bring us to equality. We're not going to have all things in common. Remember, this is not America. This is the kingdom of God where there is no equality. You're not going to like heaven if you want equality. You're not going to like heaven if you want to vote for who's in charge. You're not going to like heaven. So that's why on earth he heals you. On earth he saves you so that you can choose not to come to heaven being saved. See how good the master is? He saves so many people. But he saves you here so you decide here. Do you want him to be king? Not do you want him to save you? And so you have a wrong concept of this slavery stuff. Not really that slavery was promotion for blacks and demotions for whites. For they will be judged as the master and a slave will be judged as a slave. A slave can never be judged as a master as long as he's a slave. And so Jesus tells another story, but not a parable. In this story was a rich man. And a poor man. So notice the, the parallel. Rich compared to poverty. No equality. It doesn't say anything whether they lived a good life or a righteous life. It says they both died. And the rich had a place waiting for them. And the poor had a place waiting for them. And this is all it says when they got to the other side. Abraham said this, remember in life, you was the rich one. And he said, yeah, but the poor one over there living good. He said, yeah. He didn't know that was his outcome, that he was created poor to see what kind of rich man you was. I was hungry. And you fed me not. I was naked, and you clothed me not. I was sick and in prison, and you visited me not. When so I be hungry? When so I be naked? When so I be sick or in prison and didn't visit? When? In that you did it for these people here, you did that to me. See, they were born into poverty. So I could judge you. Their judgment happened on the other side. It was called poverty. I don't think, I hope you don't think I'm going to judge them twice. You know God doesn't judge a poor man as he still. Did you know that was in scriptures? Did you know David said to the Lord, don't let me be poor because I steal you. Don't let me be rich lest I deny you because I got everything. Jesus said this of the rich in his days. It would be easier for the camel to go through an eye of a needle than for the rich to inherit the kingdom. James the apostle said, woe unto you rich. I feel sorry for you guys born rich. Why? You got everything and you see no need of a master. <laughs> see, richness keeps you from seeing the need of a master. You got everything, even slaves. <laughs> so it's hard to see that, that God has a God. That's why I had to tell y'all, Jesus, although he was God, had a God. That when he saw himself as a man less than a God, he humbled himself as God by saying, oh, my God. <laughs> See, what did he say when he saw himself in the man? He said, oh, my God. 
So the scripture says, therefore, God, thy God, have it anointed thee with the oil of gladness above your brethren. Continue, Keturah. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. So we have, God has given everybody in this world life. But how do you get life abundantly? By serving another life. You want to be great on the other side? Who did you serve on this side? And unbeknown to the black man in America, when God bought him as a slave, it was promotion. You know what God called the slaves in the Old Testament? The chosen people. <laughs> Do you know who the chosen people were? Only the slaves. The Egyptians were never called the chosen, chosen people. The only people known as chosen people came out of slavery. Man, you can read that a thousand times and never get it. That they were called to slavery because they were chosen. People thought they were chosen to be rich. God said, I only make you rich after you come out of slavery. When did they become rich? After slavery. Remember what got them to Egypt? Famine. <laughs> what, what took them down there? God made sure they didn't have good lands and good crops. But weren't they chosen? They were chosen to suffer at the hand of a master to give us a type and shadow of God as our master that we would never complain based off of where, how we found ourselves in the flesh. Rather, we would glory that God would count us worthy to suffer for his name's sake. We will see it as a privilege to suffer. So I don't sound like your average Negro. I didn't sound like that before salvation. In other words, a lot of what I'm talking, I was talking before I got saved. Angry. Like why? Because I couldn't believe if God was my father, why slavery? So I asked God, why would you put me in the black body? Because I know I was with him before I got here. See, it says, those who he foreknew, he predestined. So I couldn't figure out, why you put me with this, this poor woman and this poor man? That was called my father and mother, by the way. I said, are you for real? I mean, this is, this is not a joke. This is how I thought coming up. Like, you know what? I'm not going to be like them. I'm out this ghetto. The ghetto got to go. And so I thought the way out of the ghetto was drugs and, and, and crime. And I said to myself, that's sinning against God. That ain't going to last. The outcome of, the, of a sinner and a crook is death. I better get an education. So I stayed in school and graduated. Then I got a job. And I found out I got a job as a GS2. A GS2. And I said to myself, yeah, how do you move up? I know what to do. Found out what pleads the master. And anything the master did, whatever the quota was, I don't care what, where I worked. I made sure I quadrupled the quota. I tell people, the first job as a GS2, I had to type 65 cards a day. 65 cards a day. Do you know how many cards I type per hour? Not a day. I could do a week's quota by lunchtime. And you know what my master, my supervisors were so impressed, they took me to their master. Say, we ain't got nobody like this on the job. Let's give him a promotion right now. And the other master said, no, he got to work six months. And the voice of the devil said to me, then don't give it to him until six months. And I said, oh, no, I'm going to impress this master. 
And I did that for, I forgot how many years. When I left that job, the company called me back and said, we will pay you twice as much money to continue to type for that. Every place I've been, they have asked me to come back and to continue. Every job, and this was before salvation. How can you serve the invisible God when you can't even serve the master down here on earth? Go ahead, Keturah. Continue to read for me, please. But those mine enemies... Which those my what? But they used to be just his slaves. And they were citizens. Notice what they used to be called. Citizens and servants of the master. But what have they become? When do you become God's enemy? When you his citizen and say, when you say, I will not have you reign over me. And unbeknown to all slaves... Even in the natural, as it is in the natural, so is it in the spiritual. The master will kill every slave that's his enemy. Continue to read. Which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. That's the kind of master Jesus is. He told them in a parable, when I come back. So look why we're here in the book of Luke. Luke 21. Let's bounce over. And, 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 and watch Jesus. Uh, Luke gives us all of these parables on slaves. Re remember now what the book of Luke is, okay? So you got four Gospels. One presents Jesus as a king. That's Matthew. He's a king. John, the, the fourth Gospel, teach, God, teach him as God. In the beginning was the word, the words were God. So everything is the son of God, the son of God, the son of God. So you got the king and the son of God. But in between Matthew and John, you have... Mark and Luke. One teach him as an ox, a servant. All he does is serve. The other one teach him as a slave, the son of man, the son of man, the son of man, son of man. What is man that you mindful of him and the son of man? So one treats him as an ox, a servant. The other one teach him. So both Mark and Luke are slaves. And what are the bookends? A king in God. Did y'all hear that? So Matthew says he's a king. Mark said, yeah, but he's really a, 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 an ox. He got to work for the master. And then, then Luke said, yeah, that's the son of man. And he gonna be, he, he gonna be, he gonna be just like all the men. And then it ends with, yeah, but he was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No man has seen the God at any time. The only begotten which come from the bosom of the God. See, look at the bookends of slavery. Slaves are surrounded by a king and a God. <laughs> and it keeps us. So Luke 21, verse 22 For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So when Jesus is about to go, he tells people, look, I'm going to tell you what's going to come in the world. Because I'm not reigning down there, people are going to think I'm not the king. But I'm going to keep saving people, healing people, and delivering them. So he's saying, but, 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 but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to deal with the people that I came to first. Because I use them first as the chosen people. And I gave them the promised land. I brought them out of slavery. I gave them homes they did not build, crops and fruits and orchids that they did not plant. I gave them where they didn't have to slave like they did in Egypt because the water came off the mountains to water the crops. So they didn't have to irrigate and dig the ground up. Water was always coming and the rain was everything come. I sent the rains and, the, and everything in the seasons. You know what they said to him? We will not let you reign over us. So he said, so I put them back into slavery. I sent the Assyrians and they took 10 tribes that only left three there. Those three didn't learn that lesson, so I sent the Babylonians, and they sent them. Then I took them out of Babylon and brought them back into the promised land. Then they go, they mess up, so I send the Greeks. <laughs> that wasn't good enough. I beat them again, so then I send the Romans. 
So Jesus is dead during the days of the Romans. So this is what he says. I'm coming to get all of y'all. This land that all you Jews are living in, I'm going to pull all of you out. Not one of you will remain in Jerusalem. 1948. 1948. God established Jerusalem again. After 1,000. 940 some years. Well, it was not that many because it was 70 AD, so 70 from the 1948, if you're going to be technical, because I, I could hear that in my ears. I want you to hear this. You and I are living in the days on the back end of what I'm getting ready to read to you. Read that verse again, Kadura. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Oh, but go ahead. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. Go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. So he's telling them, I'm sending y'all back into slavery. Look at Jesus. He's telling them this. I want you to hear this. This is Jesus telling them, before he's getting ready to go. The king is good, and the master getting ready to go. He said, I hope y'all don't think y'all are going to enjoy this. See, y'all about to kill me. I came here to see if you wanted me as your king. But they wanted the leader of a revolution. Barabbas, remember what Barabbas was. He was the leader of a revolution that demanded equality, and they wanted a voice, and they wanted the Roman government to get offered. They wanted to take that yoke over them. But God put the Roman government over them. And because Jesus as the king then set them free from the government, they say they will set themselves free by rioting. Remember the, the day that Jesus stand before Pontius Pilate was a protest. There was a riot. That's why Pontius Pilate came out. There was, why was Punch and Pilate sent to Rome to put down the protests and the rioting? And Jesus wouldn't get involved. So Judas betrayed him. John the Baptist said, are you him? Or do we look for another? So Baptists, look, they said, you not, you Pentecostals, you, you know, y'all not the one. Why? Y'all really believe in turning the other cheek and serving the master and going the extra mile, and if they sue you for your shirt, you give them your coat. Y'all actually believe that stuff in the Bible? Jesus didn't really mean that. That was just, you know, allegories and... Continue to read. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the ah, Gentiles. Guess what time we living in, y'all? the time of the Gentiles. So in my time, I have watched Israel, I want you to hear this, become a nation in 1948. And Donald Trump made Jerusalem officially their capital in our time during his administration. Guess what y'all got to witness the king over here doing? Remember, no president would dare let those chosen people, those slaves, be recognized until Donald Trump. Y'all not afraid that the king is about to come back? When the clock is ticking, capital? See, first it had to become a nation. Well, they recognize him as a nation. Remember that everybody recognized him on the earth as a nation yet. You know how many other countries had recognized Jerusalem as their capital? Not many. But the clock is ticking. See, they can't recognize the chosen people because they can't recognize the king that chose those slaves and made them chosen people. And then Christians think that they want to be, do like the Jews. Are you here to restore the kingdom now? We want, we want everybody to see we serve the king now. But now requires you to be the slave. You say, no, it doesn't. 
He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Well, you can quote scriptures, but so can I. <laughs> and there lies the problem with the people that get mad at me. They don't like the way I quote them. They don't like the stories. That's an interesting perspective, they say to me. That's interesting. Yeah, but it's biblical. Continue. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. See, the master is not coming back and be the master because during the times of the Gentiles, he's not the master. He's the lamb. <laughs> See, this is the problem. He never came to be the master. He came to be the lamb. Behold the lamb of God that take away the sins of the earth. So what was the lamb? The lamb was the slave for the master. He wanted to show us that before you can become a king, you have to serve the master and be crucified. So hence he, all, he told every disciple, pick up your cross because the cross is the key to open the gate of heaven every one of us have a cross without that cross you can't open the gate that you need to get through to get to heaven I'm not saying that as a joke I'm saying that since because I've been to heaven and I know what opens the gate your cross your testimony is what open doors. It's what gets you in heaven. The blood of the lamb, the word of your testimony, and you love not your lives until the death. Continue. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. See, then they shall see me coming in my kingdom. See, 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 he left as a slain lamb, serving the master's will to, give, to, to forgive us from our sins. He's not coming back as a lamb. The Bible says he's coming back as a lion. He's coming back as God. And he's coming to decide who he's going to take back with him to his kingdom. M Matthew 7. I think I'm going to close right here. I think my point is reaching his the ears of those that have ears. Matthew 7, starting with verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. So he talks about fruits. And people think fruits are the works they do, given to the poor, stuff like that. Continue to read. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. So remember what I said earlier? It's not because he saved you, healed you, delivered you. See, a lot of people are going to say, Lord, Lord, that's who he is to them. But he's not their master. He's their healer, their saver, their deliverer. So continue. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, not everybody can enter in that's been saved. Who's going to enter in? Continue. But he that doeth the will of my ah! father. Ah! He that, when I told him, don't eat that fruit, he didn't eat that fruit. Remember, he kicked them out of the kingdom. Out of the garden, he got rid of them. Why? Because he couldn't be master. Then when he called the slaves, they heard, from the ma they heard the master's voice. They, and this is what they say, we heard your voice. And we were afraid. Why? Because we didn't do the job you asked us to do because we over here enjoying this fruit that we ain't supposed to. We naked. We, 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 we doing naked type things, you know. Who told you you was a sinner? 
Who told you you was an adulterer? Who told you you was a thief and a liar? You know they couldn't steal in the garden? The Bible says he told them they could eat everything. <laughs> you can have everything. So there was nothing to steal. <laughs> Continue. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many Notice wonderful what they works. were done. They have done marvelous work, tremendous ministries, giving food away, giving masks away. Uh, they, they doing all kinds of things. Black lives matter. I mean, they, they had they, yellow lives matter and green lives would matter. They were doing everything except one thing, seeing him as the master. Continue. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. They worked iniquity. They used them for their ministry. It grew, but it lacked something. Man, did it lack something. They were king, not him. They were God, not him. Verse 24, so I can close. Then giving me the, the old sign. <laughs> Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. What's the difference between them? Because they both heard God. They both called him Lord. They both had works and actions. The difference is somebody could not be a slave. They would not obey the master. He gave them power to say, come out in the name of Jesus, and demons obeyed them. He gave them power to lay hands on the sick, and the sick recovered. But they could never lead people to the master, only to the Savior. There are so many ministers that can lead people to Christ and get their sins forgiven. But they cannot get them to serve that same master. Peter said, Lord, we have forsaken everything at your voice. He would just walk past them and say, follow me. They left careers. They left everything. One day I heard the master say to me, give up your fame and follow me. So I've been a nobody to somebody ever since I heard the master say, leave everything. And I can tell you, I had no problem leaving my master on the job to serve my master in a different field. And after serving him in full-time ministry for four years, he said to me, I need you back in the field. Why? I can't find too many people that can serve the white man like you. Get on up there and be an example to your flock. I need you to go to a place where they're not going to promote a man as talented as you and as gifted to you for 22 years. So I want the people to see that the just shall live by faith. And that I will take care of your family, their health, their careers. I got you covered. And so the just shall live by faith. So I say to all, serve the master that you see. So that you can make a believer out of the one that you can. Then to him that is able to keep us from falling. The one that can present us faultless before the throne of his grace to the only wise God our Savior, both now and forever be both power, majesty, and strength. Amen and amen. God bless you all.